Siege, if anyone asked you for a recommendation for a wedding venue, where would you tell them to go? Oh, maybe some estate in England? That's right! And what would you tell them to watch out for in case their wedding is outdoors? Maybe a crocodile? Holy crap, have I got a movie for you. You're not talking about croc, are you? Yeah, I am. That's only one of the best movies of 2022 starring one of the most compelling characters in cinema, Dylan Bruiser King. Isn't that the guy that goes looking for a place where his daughter can get married and he chooses a place exactly like you just described? Yes, and he takes it on a test drive in a jacuzzi. Wait, what? Never mind. The wedding party shows up, which includes all sorts of horrible people. Who do you think is the worst person in the group? Could it be the cheating groom? Or maybe the bridesmaid he cheated? with or wait triceps dude that must stay flex at all times or die it's too hard to narrow down but they do know a good party means you all stand awkwardly close to each other in a huge room almost like they couldn't afford a lot of extras that's when dylan bruiser king shows up we know his name because we looked it up on imdb yep and right after the party groom guy doesn't doesn't he have a name? Probably. So Groom Guy and Georgie go hook up in a rundown dank sheep barn. Wait, why do you remember Georgie's name? Everybody knows Georgie. So then they're interrupted by Giant Croc who eats Georgie. Not Georgie. Yes, Georgie. But Groom Guy escapes covered in blood. Georgie's blood. Naturally. So the next morning. At breakfast. There's no Georgie. Where could she be? They don't know. Groom Guy knows. But he feels really bad. About Georgie. Yes, Georgie. But Tricep Guy will comfort the groom with his tiny t-shirt and swole upper arms. But not for too long because it's wedding time! And without Georgie. Dylan Bruiser King goes to look for Georgie. On with the wedding! Not before Dylan Bruiser King finds the Crocs skull closet where Georgie has been fully digested, pooped carefully into the pile of victims that the Croc keeps in his dank sheep barn. I feel bad for Georgie. No time! Bruiser gets bit! Oh no! On with the wedding! Everyone they know is there. All 15 people, including their grandparents, fresh from Spirit Halloween. Croc has no time for weddings. Croc is on a mission. He's got to move this plot forward. And he bites Groom Guy. In the same place as Bruiser. It's cheaper that way. Tell me, Brian, do you know how to avoid a crocodile attack? I think you're supposed to run in a zigzag pattern. You're wrong. You scream and hold up your arms to your head while standing absolutely still. I didn't know that worked. It doesn't. This is when random bridesmaids shout, there's two crocs! But forget that ever happens, because they do. At this point, everyone is in the mansion hiding from the crocs. This will be an excellent point in the movie to get philosophical and ask the deep questions all people ask at some point in their lives. You mean, why do bad Bad things happen to good people? It's a question this movie asks twice, in back-to-back -back scenes, with the same two characters. And you know what the answer is? There are no good people in this movie. They really should all die. Sadly, they do not. Let's pray for a sequel, but not before Croc comes inside and we learn how to stop a giant killer crocodile. Block it with a mattress! Fact. Now their master plan is revealed. Lure the Croc to the pool and electrocute it. Fortunately, they've stored their wedding supplies in a box marked flares that still has flares inside. And they've seen Jurassic Park. It works, they win! Except Groom Guy is still alive. We've learned the bride and him have always had issues and Georgie is still dead. I want a prequel that tells Georgie's story. Too bad, roll credit. Hey Brian, have you ever heard of Bloody Mary? Uh, the Queen of England who put all those people to death or the breakfast drink that tastes like a spiked V8? Neither. I'm talking about the one where you say her name three times into a mirror and then she appears and kills you. Yeah, that, uh, that's the queen. You're wrong. It was a witch that went crazy after her baby died. I learned about her from the most informative Bloody Mary movie ever made. Wait, are you talking about the curse of Bloody Mary? That movie made by the same people who made Croc? And stars almost all of the wedding party? Heck yes I am. There's so much going on in that movie it's hard to figure out what sucks the most. That won't stop us from trying it though. First let's talk about the best and worst characters. The best being Tony. Tony, the obvious Georgie of the film. You mean Georgie from Croc? Yes, and Georgie from Croc is actually in this movie. Uh, which one is she? I don't know, one of these chicks. 
Well, who's the worst character? Blonde Becky, of course, who sleeps with her best friend's boyfriend and wants to be completely forgiven because that was four years ago. No big deal. Is her name actually Blonde Becky? Doesn't matter. The movie is less than an hour long and lasts forever. Where do we even start with this plot? So these four friends go on a retreat to reconnect. And it's run by an OnlyFans model. How do you know? Did you see her? I saw that she wasn't dressed for adventure. Or was she? So she's the host at this retreat, which according to the sign outside is a hostel and apparently has no parking lot because they park miles away and hike up to it. And one of them is pregnant. You know that from the pillow under her shirt. I like how the opening scene was exciting and someone dies right away. Yeah, that was to lure us in for the next 30 minutes of absolutely nothing happening. That's not fair. That one Georgie is trying to get the pregnant Georgie to reconcile with blonde Becky. What they need is to spend some time doing OnlyFans training. You're in luck! They do! But not before being interrupted by a random scream from someone who I assume is a cameraman. Don't question it. Can I question the editing? No, you must accept that that is art. And art is stupid. But they go to bed in the afternoon. Art. And OnlyFans instructor has a sequence completely out of order. I clearly do not understand art. You wouldn't. Is this why Georgie number three keeps touching everyone? No. Oh. You haven't even mentioned that OnlyFans lady says all of her lines like she has just smoked the biggest joint she's ever had. So, how do you four girls know each other? Oh, I just thought she was stupid. She's traumatized. By this movie? By her career choices. Then they do the Bloody Mary thing. Oh, you mean breakfast? No, with the mirror. Oh, 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 right. The whole point of the movie. I lost track. They all go to different mirrors and say her name three times. Georgie, Georgie, Georgie. No, the other name. Oh, sorry. I think I'm getting a contact high from the joint that lady smoked. Then Bloody Mary shows up. What? Again? Why did she leave in the first place? So the movie can happen. Is that art? You wouldn't understand. So she kills people. And then? That's what happens. She kills people. Oh, right. And none of it makes any sense until Tony shows up. Hey, it's me, Tony. And OnlyFans brother, I think. Doesn't matter because they're both dead. No, Tony. How will they defeat this high school drama depiction of not the Queen of England? Even though the ancient book they find says she is, in fact, the Queen of England. Oh, right. The book. Burn the book! They burn the book! They win! Only one Georgie left because she was pregnant. Like Bloody Mary was. Except with a pillow. It doesn't work. Roll credits! Hey, Siege. Um, I was going to tell you something, but I can't remember what it was. That happens. But what if I have dementia? That's not enough to think that you have dementia. But I can't remember! Dementia is more than just not remembering. But that movie from Jagged Edge Productions... Wait, you've been watching more movies from Jagged Edge? The company that pooped out Croc and the Curse of Bloody Mary? Yeah, I watched one about Humpty Dumpty and ever since I've been paranoid that I have dementia. Hang on. Let me go watch this movie and see what you're talking about. Many, many minutes later. Holy crap, what did I just watch? Why do people give this company money to make all these movies? Oh, did you watch it? D do I have dementia? I saw all one hour and 30 minutes of some lady looking confused, but able to perform everyday tasks just fine. And this isn't what dementia is. Oh, good. I guess I shouldn't worry unless I start seeing a Humpty Dumpty doll killing everyone I know. I don't understand why that doll is Humpty Dumpty. Maybe we should start at the beginning. Okay, fine. We're back at the same mansion that Croc was filmed at with Bride Girl and Blonde Becky from The Curse of Bloody Mary. These movies seem to be a very tight community of actors. I think you mean inbred. Wow. Uh, okay, so it's a little hard keeping things straight when you watch these films back to back. There's no reason to watch these films at all. And definitely no reason anyone should be watching them back to back. Unless they have dementia. This lady does not have dementia. Hang on, hang on. We're not there yet. So the movie starts out with a lady who looks confused and can't remember some things. 
Oh, I guess we are there. Uh, so the two daughters are trying to deal with their mother, who they think might have. Please stop saying dementia. But the movie... Look, it's time we just started naming names. Jagged Edge Productions should be banned from owning cameras. I don't disagree, but we're here, and we don't always get to pick our battles. This does feel like it was forced upon us. Everything from Jagged Edge feels like an assault. But with boredom. Like the other movies we talked about, this one is 90% boring conversations, and this one features an older lady looking off camera like she can't remember what time the wine mom said they'd be over. So let's make this easy. Taking away all the boring parts, what happens in this movie? <sighs> the opening credits show some lady making a doll. I don't know why everyone thinks this doll is Humpty Dumpty, but whatever. So we cut to the stupid mom's birthday party where we once again couldn't afford six measly extras. So we hear stock audio of people singing happy birthday and then her daughter's telling her everyone left already, but she's still holding the stupid cake. Like, we wouldn't know that it's the Tuesday they all had off to film this piece of garbage on a budget of $3. Hang on, you're drifting. Sorry. So, blah blah, boring. The doctor thinks it might be the onset of dementia. Maybe. And then they go off to spend some time at their old childhood home, which is the same house that Dylan Bruiser King booked for the wedding in Croc. Like we wouldn't notice. The camera angles are kind of identical in spots. I hate Jagged Edge so, so much. So they got to the antique store. I know it was an antique store because like most stores, they pasted up a paper sign that said antiques on the inside of a freaking door when everyone knows we're probably in a gardening shed on the same property as the house. This is where they get Humpty Dumpty. Dementia Mom seems to think this doll used to be hers, but her daughters- Bride Girl and Blonde Becky? Yes, they don't remember. They don't buy it, but when they get home, it's sitting on their doorstep. So sometimes Humpty moves when no one is looking. And he kills the ex-sister-in-law and Dementia Mom sees Humpty and calls Britain's finest police over to investigate. And they don't find anything. So we have to do more talking and then kaboom! We discover Blonde Becky is adopted. Why do we care? And Dementia Mom keeps a diary. Where she scribbled, Blonde Becky is not my daughter, over and over. Dementia. This isn't dementia. So Dementia Mom <sighs> sees a bunch of really bad CGI dolls because Jagged Edge doesn't know when to stop. It's like they want to make all of us hate them so much. Do you want to talk about how Dementia Mom sees her reflection talking back to her about the doll? No, because it doesn't help. The doll kills Blonde Becky. We don't really know that for sure. Okay, look, I'm gonna wrap this up. A bunch of nothing happens, then at the end, Dementia Mom is sitting there looking at the camera with the bodies of her family around her. And we're not sure if it's the doll that was really killing them or the mom. But we don't care, because this movie is a rug pull. We were sitting on the rug and Jagged Edge pulled it. Rolled the frickin' credits! Oh, there's a sequel. Son of a- Hey Siege, what's up? Eh. Uh, what's wrong? I feel dead inside. Why? What happened? We watched Bloody Mary Returns by Jagged Edge Productions. Oh, is that why I suddenly feel like life has no flavor? Probably. Maybe if we talk through it, we'll start feeling things again. Uh, I guess. Well, let's start at the beginning. It doesn't matter. Uh, where else would we start? No, I mean the beginning doesn't matter. It's two characters we don't know being chased by Bloody Mary and they die. Well, they were there to show that Mary can leave the house. We already knew that. She was in the car at the end of the first movie. The way that Jagged Edge Productions makes movies leaves me wondering whether making movies is extremely difficult or they're extremely incompetent. If making movies means lots of drone shots of trees, then how hard could it be? You mean these? They're really only two or three shots. They're just used ex 
extensively. So after the credits. Which are just scenes from the first movie. Yes, because we want to relive that masterpiece. We get to meet our main characters. Idiots. They're idiots. And vloggers. I can't remember anyone's names. Yeah, me neither. Let's just call them Mom Jeans, Man Bun, Crybaby, and Other Chick. What about the two drunk roommates? Yeah, sure. Them too. Wait, don't forget about the roommate who looks like a feral cat. So Mom Jeans spends 20 minutes trying to convince her vlogger friends to make a fake video where they summon Bloody Mary in the belief that one viral video will make them filthy rich. Oh, right, because pregnant Georgie is in a psychiatric hospital and everyone thinks that she killed her friends in the first movie. Right, and we get some nonsensical series of cuts that don't tell us where they are, what day it is, or why we want any of these people to live. Uh, oh, don't forget the car ride where the windows are down, there's no wind, and someone off camera is waving a tree branch back and forth to simulate motion like none of us have ever seen a car move before. I did forget it, and now you reminded me, and I'm dead in side again. Well, then let's move this along. So they talk to now unpregnant Georgie. She warns them about Mary. They don't listen. And when they leave, her barely out of high school doctor comes in and says, Nonsense, you need to pull yourself together, girl. Then she invokes Bloody Mary in the mirror. And we get to see the most well-lit death scene in horror movie history. By the goofiest movie monster. She's acting as hard as she can. I hate this movie. That's good. Emotions are returning. I guess... So the idiot vloggers set up their seance video thingy and say Bloody Mary's name into the mirror. And she immediately shows up in a different room and kills Feral Cat Girl. Right. And they realize they're trapped in the house and Bloody Mary is stalking them. And she can now possess people. So stupid. And at one point, other chick gets pulled into the mirror where in the previous movie, the mirror world was all red. But now uh, they can only afford one red light. Can't believe this movie exists. So Mom Jeans and Crybaby go into the mirror world where Jagged Edge was too lazy to choose flip horizontal and make it actually mirrored visually. I mean, do they actually get money for these movies? I can make a better movie than this with my cell phone. But could you act as hard as Crybaby did when he was whimpering his way through the mirror universe? I refuse to believe he was acting. He's probably actually afraid of the dark, and this was a camera they left rolling by accident. He dies. Unfortunately, that was acting. And Mom Jeans makes it back with Other Chick to the real universe, where Other Chick dies anyway. And we totally forgot that drunk roommates showed up after Mary's on her killing spree. I don't care. They deserve no recognition. I hope they never act again. So Man Bun dies after he confesses he likes Mom Jeans. And we have to listen to Mom Jeans tell Man Bun he doesn't like her. He likes other girl. And he's like, no, I like you. And she's like, no, love, you like other chick. And he's like, I don't. I like you because you drive me crazy. And she's like, I don't have time for this. And that's the first thing me and her agree on. Right, so Man Bun dies. Idiot. And Mom Jeans escapes. Then she ends up with pregnant Georgie in the same freaking room at the psych ward because of course she would. And the fact that her doctor was murdered in that room is never mentioned. And pregnant Georgie is just wandering around like she owns the place. It's the big I told you so moment. And then we cut back to the house where a detective is handed the video camera that has magically recorded everything because Man Bun forgot to turn it off. And surprise, through the magic of editing, we see that the detective is Bloody Mary. Lieutenant Bloody Mary. What an absolute crap fest. You know what else is stupid? No one tries breaking the windows to get out. Bloody Mary has all these new abilities and can talk through people and makes them kill for her while she just stands there and watches. And that pair of gigantic scissors that she holds at the tip while she stabs people. The filmmakers don't know how to use their drone's camera and it's just shifting all over the place. And it's once again not even nighttime and they just put plastic over the windows because that totally looks like night. There are no rules for Bloody Mary. And stupid mom jeans just knows how to open portals and close seances and holy crap, these movies are going to drive me insane. Hey, you're feeling things again. It's happening. Roll credits. Hey, Brian, what are you doing with that drone? Oh, I've decided to make a movie. Oh, cool. What's it about? What? What's the movie about? Oh, uh, an hour? No, I mean what happens in the movie. Oh, well, uh, first I have to show the audience where we are. Right, that drone will come in handy. Oh, you have no idea. So then what happens? Well, I was thinking we could talk about the stuff that's happening in between drone shots. Are you sure this movie hasn't been done already? 
You're right. I need to make it original. How about I put some dinosaurs in it? This is sounding really familiar. Is it? Wait a minute. Conversations in between drone shots with dinosaurs? You just described Pterodactyl from Jagged Edge Productions. I'm pretty sure that movie was about dragons. No, that one guy thought they were dragons because they don't have Wi-Fi in Scotland, apparently. Crap! There goes my movie! Jagged Edge ruins everything. You have to admit, they have their formula down. So we have two characters at the beginning we don't care about. Uh, again. And they're driving somewhere on a cloudy day. A cloudy day best describes this entire film. Please don't call this a film. And they're somehow even more British in this movie. I can't understand half of what they're saying. I only have one of a morning and one of an evening, you cheeky cow. Oh, pregnant Georgie from Bloody Mary's in this one. Except she's trying her hardest to do a Russian accent, and it's so close, it's Brazilian. I bring my lipstick, I bring my hoops, and... <gasps> you have to hand it to her, though. She does more acting with her face in this than all the other actors put together. In this movie, Jagged Edge decided to do away with things like suspense, build-up, storytelling, or talent and instead decided to focus on showcasing their sick 3D modeling skills. And the characters in the beginning should see them overhead because that's where they were dropped in Adobe Premiere, but they do not. So let's hit the highlights of this freaking disaster. Okay, four university students ranging in age from late 30s to in denial go looking for the sister of one of them who was lost in the beginning. And despite this stressful time, they make it clear none of them want to be there. I would name the characters, but not only do I not care, I can't remember. Except that OnlyFans model is back. She's a prolific actress. Oh, and we do get introduced to someone new, Snake Legs. From there, it's one long conversation about what's happening. Which isn't much. Then a drone shot that takes us to a different place where we talk about what's not happening. Hey, sometimes they talk on the phone. And sometimes in a car. That's to break up the monotony. It doesn't work. The pterodactyls are being contained by a sheriff and a guy in plaid named Tom. Except they think they're dragons. Part of their job is apparently to kill whoever discovers the dragons. Yep. Yep. Then they set the house on fire. And it ends. Yep. <sighs> I was fascinated by how they were bold enough to break new ground by making the colors really saturated halfway through the movie. Mostly the reds and blues. My favorite character was the blue piece of radioactive gum stuck on the wall. It deserved an Oscar. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, uh, want to be in my movie? Sure. Roll credits. Hey Siege, you want to watch a movie? Sure. But I'm kind of burnt out with all these Jagged Edge production movies. We don't have to watch one of those. How about a random sci-fi movie? Okay. Um, let's see. Here's one called Crystal Shadow. How bad can it be? What did... What just happened? There was a series of images and possible events. And I think some guy from X-Files. Did you never watch X-Files? <coughs> oh, good. I thought it was just me and I had a stroke. We should talk through this just to make sure we can still understand abstract concepts. And words. So, Crystal's shadow. There's a girl, her name is Crystal. A guy finds her passed out on the side of the road. And of course, when you find someone passed out on the side of the road, you know what to do? Take them for some poker at Texas Barbecue! In the middle of the night. This whole movie takes place in Texas, a really remote part of Texas where Cigarette Man from X-Files has apparently retired. From his acting career. I feel like this movie was something he did accidentally between naps. Let's run down the characters. We have main grizzled radio host guy and his Native American friend played by an actor who's actually from Malta. Then there's British Blonde who for some reason shows up to talk about their paranormal investigation show. Her accent is hard to pin down, but I'm pretty sure it's not British. 
It's vaguely European. And then there's Cigarette Man from X-Files and his wife. I need to point out that his wife appears magically in scenes only when she's needed. So I think that's about it. What about Texas Barbecue Guy? Welcome to my humble abode. Oh, his restaurant was a front for a poker ring. No, I think you have that backwards. The poker was totally up front. It was the barbecue that was way in the back, assuming because it's horse meat. You want to talk about what happens in this movie? Fine. One, Crystal is picked up by truck driving dude. Two, truck driving dude dies and has a satanic symbol carved in back, but this never comes up again. Three, Crystal crashes truck into Radio Guy's RV during a show. I want to point out that he's trying to stay off the government's radar, but he's not only taking phone calls, he's also doing some sort of live stream. And Crystal calls in right before literally driving into his secret broadcast station. So, four, they're all connected now. They become one happy family even though they hardly talk and keep her in a dark trailer for hours. Five, we're suddenly in a confusing series of sci-fi slash alien things happening. Six, something is stalking Crystal. Seven, they have to use science or something to save her. Eight, there's lots of paranormal imagery on the TV. And nine, as viewers, we lose all sense of meaning and purpose and could really go for a stiff drink. Or for some Texas barbecue. I could use some Texas barbecue. Welcome to my humble abode. I honestly don't know how to describe this movie. It's like, I know what it's supposed to be, but when I look at it, it's unintelligible. We were really too hard on Jagged Edge Productions. At least we know what Jagged Edge is trying to do. Scam us? Yes, exactly. But this? This hurt. This still hurts. We should go watch another Jagged Edge movie just to make us feel normal again. They did one about an evil plastic surgeon. That sounds like it will soothe my soul. Actually, there's two of them. Heal my wounded spirit, Jagged Edge. Roll credits. Three, Crystal crashes truck into Radio Guy's RV driving... What? <laughs> that That is... RV driving... That, <laughs> that is literally not what it says. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that got me. Okay. <laughs> hey, Brian, what you got there? Uh, apparently, I won free plastic surgery. Really? Why did you enter a contest for free plastic surgery? Oh, I didn't, but I shouldn't pass up the opportunity, right? Let me see this. Blah, blah, blah. You've won. Hang on. Let me Google this address. Should I get my nose done? Your nose is fine. Yeah, but I can't let this go to waste. What if I could be a model? You want to be a model? I don't not want to be a model. This address is a random house out in the middle of nowhere. This sounds fishy and really familiar. Maybe I should get peck implants. That way I won't have to lift weights. You're gonna go to a doctor and get carved up just so you can, wait, doctor, carved. You're about to relive the movie Dr. Carver. You mean the one that's almost a Jagged Edge Productions movie starring some of the same people but with less drone shots? Yes, this movie stars Georgie from Croc, except in this movie she thinks she needs a boob job. She could be bigger if she didn't want to be able to stand upright. And there's Hello Nurse, who was briefly in the movie Pterodactyl and the Curse of Humpty Dumpty. But the main character is a 37-year-old woman who identifies as a 24-year-old aspiring model. Then there's two other chicks, but they're disposable. Movie begins with model chick on a photo shoot. Standing on a fly-infested pile of manure. Yes, with Russell Storbrand taking photos. Then he tells her her nose is too big. It's so big you can't even see her face. Face. It's just completely nose. It's so obvious. Then decides that getting her nose done is her last chance at having a modeling career. She's in luck because she wins free plastic surgery, just like me. You didn't win plastic surgery, and neither did she. Her and three others drive to what looks like a bed and breakfast on an English farm. They immediately drink wine and have a seance. And not a single one of these geniuses think that's weird. So one girl wants her face tightened. Her face was fine. The next girl wants her belly fat sucked out. She has literally no fat to spare. Then Georgie wants a boob job because her boobs are, quote, pancakes. Yeah. 
stacks of pancakes. Several stacks of pancakes. And then nose job. I wish we could come up with a better nickname, but this character is completely without personality. What about... Wine is not a personality. Oh. How do we explain this plot? Well, first, there's no doctor and there's no plot. There's kind of a plot. Hello Nurse was in a car accident with her sister and her sister died as a result of botched plastic surgery. Right, and that makes Hello Nurse summon a disfigured demon that is basically Bloody Mary. They even summon her by saying her name into a mirror. I forget why Hello Nurse lured these four girls to come in for surgery. It doesn't really make sense. They go through some kind of torture based on the type of surgery they want, but it doesn't really lead to anything because Dr. Bloody Mary just ends up slitting their throats to collect like their blood. Which she drinks and then gives to Hello Nurse. Who doesn't even drink it. She drinks some potion that does nothing that we can see and that the other chicks drank during the seance earlier in the movie. This movie isn't technically a Jagged Edge movie, but it has to be like a cousin Jagged Edge married. Don't forget to point out that Nose Model's boyfriend is an American who is in desperate need of doing a single push-up. He teams up with her agent to track her down because something doesn't seem right with the surgery deal. And the agent is super concerned, but has to get her beauty sleep before she rushes out the door to save her client from being murdered. She is a woman of action. They get to the house. They attack Dr. Bloody Mary with a hammer. It doesn't work. Agent Beauty Sleep runs away in someone else's car somehow. And Nose Job gets the bright idea to get the mirror and show Dr. Mary her ugly face. And that results in her destruction by the cheesiest CGI effect in any movie we have watched so far. Yep. I forgot, what happened to Hello Nurse? She picks up the mirror, we see her reflection, and it ends. I don't understand what it was supposed to symbolize. We're not smart enough to understand. I guess. Hey, maybe our questions will be answered in the sequel. Demonic Plastic Surgeon MD. I guess we have to. So should I go for the pecs or the nose? I think you should wait until you get more information, like a police report. Maybe I'll just sit around drinking wine. I'll get the salt lamp. Roll credits. Hey, Brian, what's that? You didn't win more free plastic surgery, did you? What? Oh, no, this is my screenplay. Oh, you're still going to make your movie? Yeah, uh, I decided to do a horror movie. What's it about? Well, I'm trying to make it unique. So I came up with this story about a creepy suburban man who hangs out with his neighbor's teenage daughter when her parents are away. And at night, he hunts down and massacres snails with a meat cleaver. That's unique. It's probably never been done. Wait a minute. I'm thinking he freaks out a bunch of girls during a slumber party. Hold on. What's he wearing? Uh, let's see. I have him wearing a Hawaiian shirt, cargo pants, uh, maybe find an actor who has sandy blonde hair, and depending on how far away from the camera he is, he seems to be around 13 or maybe 55 years old. Slumber party, Hawaiian shirt, indeterminate age. You just described that guy from Slumber Party Massacre. No, this is different. The neighbor. You described the creepy neighbor from Slumber Party Massacre. Crap. Let's make sure the rest of your screenplay isn't ripping off the rest of the movie. Well, it starts out with a bunch of girls having basketball practice at school. Slumber Party Massacre. Then the main girl who kind of looks like a cross between Rene Russo and Kate Mulgrew is going to have a... Slumber Party? A sleepover at her house while everyone's parents are mysteriously away. Massacre. So, the neighbor just wants to make sure Kate Mulgrew's okay, so he just walks in the house, you know, to check on her, like neighbors do with teenage girls. Slumber party massacre. No, no, he's not the killer. The killer has this humorously long drill. Is he wearing a jean jacket? Yes. And his name is Russ? Maybe, but in my story, he's mad about the GOP lifting the Social Security Acts. And there's a pizza guy who... Please stop. But he gets his eyes drilled out by... Russ Thorne. His name is Russ Thorne. Uh, okay, but here's where things get interesting. See, there's two sisters next door whose parents are also away for the night. And one of them is dressed like a Hooters waitress. And she has this quirk. Is the quirk collecting Sylvester Stallone Playgirl magazines? Crap. 
And there's a teacher that looks like she's the same age as her students and used to be on Little House on the Prairie. But but they beat the killer with a machete and he falls in the pool. Okay, you're right. I, I apparently I forgot I watched Slumber Party Massacre. That's because it's a completely forgettable movie. I wish I hadn't been working on this for the last 10 years. There are worse things you could have been doing with your time. Well, I have another idea. Uh, this one's about a bed that keeps luring people in to lay down on it. And it's out in the middle of nowhere and it's all grimy, but people keep going there anyway. Deathbed. That's the movie Deathbed. Don't feel bad. Maybe you need a co-writer. We should work on your next screenplay together. Okay. Uh, well, I had this other idea about a demonic plastic surgeon. Brian, we just... We just watched that. We did? Roll credits. Whoa, what was that? What was what? Something just ran under that cabinet. Maybe it was a mouse. No, it was... Wait, there it is. What, where? Spider! Holy crap, that's huge. Step on it! You step on it. It's bigger than my shoe! How else are we supposed to kill it? Hang on, let me Google... Spider kill. Maybe it came from the attic. Attic. Oh, here we go. There's a whole movie about this. Really? From, holy crap, Jagged Edge Productions. Well, they make crappy movies, but maybe they know how to kill spiders. Whatever works. Let's see what they have to say. Day 383. The experiment is a success. By the correction of the gene GH1, the organism has remained stable. <laughs> I need something shocking, something outside box. Because in the next town, there are these rumors and stories about this scientist who was taking his experiments to the extreme. And if you interview him, it'll be controversial. We have just arrived at Mr. Zeisman's home. Come on, it's important I've got to start taking risks. Ah! Ignoring the ravaging, they pushed experiments to the extreme. Or something. He's in the room with me. I don't think one of them will act. I think I find him! Did you hear that? Jagged Edge never disappoints. What did we learn? Well, first, old scientists should never genetically alter spiders. I think the point of the movie was about the power of the press to find the truth. I think it's about when it's time for an aging journalist to retire, they should just retire. Okay, let's sort this out. Dementia Mom from Curse of Humpty Dumpty is now a journalist whose stories aren't cutting the mustard with box wine editor lady. Right, and her daughter is that chick from Dr. Carver, but now she's pregnant with a kid and her boyfriend doesn't want her to have the baby. But too late, the baby's due, like, right now. And then her other daughter is in the army, but has decided to take a break, because apparently you can do that in England. Then army daughter gives her the idea to investigate the guy we see at the beginning, experimenting on spiders, or scorpion spiders, or whatever that was. So, of course, they assemble the Scooby gang, consisting of Dementia Mom and the two daughters, her editor who shows up like she's ready for box wine night with the girls, the deadbeat baby daddy, and giant blonde lady, who's there just to be giant. They go to the- Croc house. They go back to the croc house, because someone at Jagged Edge must know the owner. The house, which they basically break into, right, is covered in spider webs. So they meander around until they find dead scientist guy who has clearly been eaten by spiders. And when you find someone in a house full of spiders who has been eaten by spiders, you just hang around casually. They find a spider in a glass case, which is weird and scorpion like and huge, but whatever. They are unfazed, some might say. Professional. Except for baby daddy who can't be bothered to get a shirt that fits or to be a dad to the baby that's about to pop out of this chick at any moment. He wants her to abort the baby who is practically a full-grown adult at this point. She's really pregnant. So he leaves and goes to the pool slash jacuzzi house to check it out because it said it was 
quarantine. And then the spiders abort him. I did not mourn his loss. This movie is 99% talking, so we can just cut to the point. How do they deal with the spider? Oh, they shoot at it. Army Blonde says she was trained for this. Contrary to conventional wisdom, the greatest existential threat to democracy is giant spiders. The army trained her to fire randomly in the direction of the threat. In this case, the spider. They finally decide to get pregnant chick into the car, who is now in labor, and they turn around to see... A giant spider! That's not in the attic. There was never a spider in the attic. It was in the bedroom. Spider in the bedroom would be a completely different film. There it is. D did it get bigger? I know what to do. What, what, where did you get that gun? Roll credits! What are you doing? Taking a break. Trying to find something to watch. Oh, wait. Go back. There's a new Winnie the Pooh movie? It doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh. Okay, it's gotta be better than watching Slumber Party Massacre 2. Wait, Jagged Edge? They're doing kids movies now? Maybe they gave up. I gotta know. Let it roll. You know, you're the first person I ever shown this place to. Why am I so special? Because soon, we'll be Christopher and we'll love them. You should be close now. We're not going to find them. We will. Pooh, Piglet, Eeyore, we were friends for many years and they're out now. Christopher, we need to leave. Now. I really need to find out what's happening, okay? This person had a goal, and it was not a goal. That was not a children's movie. That wasn't even a grown-ups movie. I'm not sure it was a movie. I don't know how they did it, but this is the worst Jagged Edge movie we have ever seen. It's like they forgot all the things they knew about making movies and just decided to start all over. They were doing so good, too. So we start out with an animated storyboard that tells us Christopher Robin left the Hundred Acre Woods to go to school and all the beloved characters we grew up with started killing and eating each other. All that's left in this movie is Pooh and Piglet, probably for budgetary reasons. Eeyore is dead, they ate him, and then they use his tail to whip Christopher Robin. Hold on, we're not there yet. Christopher takes his fiance slash wife. Because within five minutes, the script writers forgot which one she was. To meet his childhood animal friends. She doesn't believe that everything he's told her about them is true. She believes it when Pooh kills her. And then we cut to a whole other group of unrelated girls. Because this is a Jagged Edge Productions movie. And that's all they know how to cast. So let's run down the cast. We have Main Chick, who is traumatized by some event which later we find out is basically a big nothing. Then, Nerd Girl. I can tell who she is because she wears glasses. We get another OnlyFans model, which is probably where Jagged Edge puts out all their casting calls. And then we have the two lesbians who are away for the weekend, but the one feels like it's too soon. And don't forget Snake Lake. That's right, she's showcasing her latest lip injection before Pooh puts her in a meat grinder head first, and then there's a lot of talking. As usual. Yeah, so we'll skip all that. Cut to Pooh staring at Christopher Robin, who spends 99% of this movie crying like a man. And Pooh and Piglet are very detailed masks, tucked into flannel shirts, because the effects budget in a Jagged Edge movie never disappoints. So Christopher Robin says he's sorry for leaving Pooh. Multiple times. 99% of his dialogue is apologizing. Then Pooh and Piglet go to attack the girls at their getaway place, and after killing OnlyFans girl, they write, get out, in blood, on the windows. And these geniuses say, it must be the same person who killed OnlyFans. Inspired. Can we talk about the two lesbians getting killed in the pool house? Well, first, it's the narrowest, shallowest pool I've ever seen. And second, 
This one chick is incapable of crawling out of it. Third, Piglet enters the pool and we get the slowest waste level water chase in movie history. She still dies. I'm glad. Then the remaining girls find Christopher Robin. Who's crying. Of course. And they set him free and leave him only to find giant blonde lady oh and we forgot to mention that dylan bruiser king made an appearance for half a second love that guy giant blonde lady is chained up and bloody they free her and she takes the gun that main character girl was carrying and not using she shoots in the air to attract piglet and we find out her revolver only had one round in it she dies the remaining lesbian knocks piglet out and chains him up she ends up killing him with a blow to the head. This is important to remember for later. Who ends up killing the remaining lesbian by shoving a machete beside her mouth like a special effect in an elementary school play. Time for the final showdown. The girls run out and stop a truckload of British rednecks who confront Pooh. They surround him, beat him with bats, crowbars, broken bottles, and a lot of tough, salty language. After all, Piglet died after getting hit with a sledgehammer. But Piglet wasn't Pooh. Oh, he was Pooh. All the rednecks die. Then guess who shows up? Mr. Crybaby. He rams Pooh with a car. And it explodes. It doesn't work. It also doesn't matter. Pooh kills the main chick and Christopher Robin runs away crying. So in short, not a kid's movie. But public domain. We should make our own Winnie the Pooh movie. I'll get my flannel shirt. I'll scout OnlyFans. Roll credits. <laughs>